Welcome back to Oakhaven. Our last video, we talked about how we were working on the slopes, the steep slopes, and how we were clearing honeysuckle and other shrubs off of the steep slopes. Uh, we took a break from that. Uh, we still have steep slopes to do, but we took a break from that because we had some snow on the ground, and the ground is kind of muddy, and working on the slopes, it's really slippery and difficult. So we're uh, hitting a different area. This is an area that when we moved to this property 20-some years ago was basically meadow. And I take full responsibility for the fact that we have not treated this area and we left it and it has grown up in a huge honeysuckle forest. Uh, some of you have seen it in other videos that we've done. We've let it get way out of hand. Uh, so we're taking advantage of this time to, and to come on, come in here and, uh, and clear out some of the big honeysuckles. Uh, because it's open, uh, most of the work that we've done is in the woods uh, where the, the shade kind of suppresses the growth of the honeysuckles a little bit. This was out in the open and the honeysuckles have just gone wild. So this was an, an open meadow. It was actually the top of an old dam. Uh, the dam went across here and it formed a whole lake bed here that has since been drained out. Uh, we'll talk about that sometime. We'll give a little history of our property and uh, what, we're, what we're doing and how it affects our management. Uh, but we won't go into that detail right now. But we're gonna talk about these, these huge honeysuckles. So when we talk about big honeysuckles here, we're talking about uh, mostly Amur honeysuckle, uh, Lanacera macchiae, a little bit of uh, Tartarian honeysuckle, uh, Lanacera tartarica, uh, but mostly Amur honeysuckle. So these huge bush honeysuckles. And you can see as you scan through here that I've been cutting out a lot. It really doesn't leave a lot of other uh, things. This, when we've walked through here before, when the honeysuckles were here, there's practically nothing native growing underneath it. it, uh, it the, the honeysuckle shrubs pretty much suppress everything that's growing underneath it, both uh, because of uh, sunlight suppression and because uh, honeysuckle produces chemicals that as it drips off of the, the leaves and onto the ground, it suppresses the, the germination and the growth of other native plants. So as I go through this, um, you know, we've got some some pretty massive honeysuckles. If you look at the, the stump here, this was cut uh, earlier in the summer. Um, but we're talking about, you know, eight inches in diameter, up to 10 inches in diameter. Uh, they're basically trees. You, you could climb them. Although honeysuckle, just by their nature, they don't grow up as a, subtle, a single trunk. Uh, they're a multi-stemmed uh, trunk. So we, we go through, we have, we have a process. Um, I, <laughs> everything I do, I have a process of why, how, how I do it and why I do it. So we're going to share uh, how we do what we do. So before we start, let's talk a little bit about the tools that we're going to use and how we do this. Uh, when we're cutting big things like that, we use a DeWalt 16 inch, um, 60 volt uh, electric chainsaw. I really like this saw. We've talked about it before in other videos. The, um, I, I like the fact that it starts up when you let go of the trigger, it stops. We, I don't have a chainsaw going regularly. Um, I like the fact that it's relatively quiet so I don't have to wear ear protections. Um, maybe you get something that you would want to wear ear protection. I don't know what, what the decibel level is on this, but it, it's relatively small. So um, I feel pretty good about not worrying about uh, ear protection with that. Uh, we're going to cut. Well, let me say, we, uh, I use a biodegradable chainsaw oil just because I don't really like spreading petroleum products out into the woods. Uh, and when you're using a chainsaw, the whole point of the bar oil is that it's lubricating the, the bar while you're cutting, so it's constantly spitting off, um, off oil. I'd rather not have that be a petroleum product, so we use a biodegradable uh, chainsaw oil. Um, this is Lotion Motion. Um, it, it works great while we're using it. I will say that I was cutting the other day with a, uh, a gas chainsaw that I hadn't used for a while that had this in it, and uh, it had uh, gummed things up pretty well. So as it was sitting on the bar and on the chain, it had pretty much gummed things up uh, over time. So if you continue to use it and uh, using it regularly, uh, it works great. Uh, if it's being stored, uh, it causes a little bit of a problem. So that's what we're doing there. I am going to wear um, eye protection uh, because I'll be working over my head and I don't want sawdust falling into my my eyes. Um, when we, After we cut, we treat with 
a glyphosate solution. This is a 20% glyphosate solution. We take a 40% glyphosate concentrate and cut it in half to about a 20% glyphosate that we put on the um, the, uh, the the phloem uh, layer of the the cut stem. When we're done, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and then we uh, distribute it with our our sprayer, which is basically just a regular garden sprayer. I think it was like nine dollars or something like that, um, which we uh, attach a a sponge covered with a uh, ripstop nylon covering on it that saturates it and gives it us a, 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 a tool that we can we can paint the the um, the glyphosate on. <coughs> uh, we've modified this, put a strap on it, and then I have it attached to the back of my belt with a carabiner so that when I'm working and cutting, it stays out of my way. So there's the basic tools. Now we'll talk a little bit about the procedure that we do. So these samples that we're going to try cutting today are maybe not the biggest we've done, but they're uh, the light is good and <laughs> they're in a good location, so it's good for filming and you, you'll get the idea. Um, I mentioned that we're cutting mostly honeysuckle. We also have autumn olive. We've got some huge autumn olives in here uh, that we will also be cutting out. It's the same procedure either way. Now, when we're cutting, as you probably saw in that first part of the video, there's a lot of brush on the ground. Um, I like to leave brush on the ground. I prefer to have it um, drop and decompose. Uh, you know, the the brush provides habitat for wildlife. The uh, as it's decomposing, it's uh, it's um, you know keeping the carbon into the soil. You know, if you burn things, you're releasing all that carbon dioxide into the air, which um, is just not a good thing to be doing right now. Um, you know, carbon dioxide levels are increasing. I don't think there's much uh, argument that. Uh, carbon dioxide levels are increasing and you know the impact of that is maybe debatable but you know we don't want to do that more than we have to so the idea of cutting it and letting it fall on the ground and rotting in place is best we're in our own woods we don't have people walking through you know uh, we're not a forest preserve or a nature center or things like that that uh, uh, we need to keep up our appearance so because we heat with wood at least Part of our heating comes from wood. Uh, we will take advantage of some of this massive wood here and cut it up for firewood. If you're if you're not in that situation, um, I would probably just cut it and let it lay. Or if you guys want to cut it and haul it someplace and burn it, that's up to you. But we're going to cut it as firewood. So as I'm talking about how our procedure is, uh, it will definitely be leaning towards uh, how we do it to preserve firewood. Okay, so the first step with me when I'm looking at this, uh, we're, we're on kind of a slope. Honeysuckle tends to lean over the slope, so it almost always falls down the slope. You know, when you're cutting a bigger tree, you have to pay attention to how it's going to fall. Some of these honeysuckles are large enough that you almost need to consider them as a tree and what's going to happen if it, if it falls. Um, small stuff when I'm working in the woods, I tend to let it fall and just like fall over my back and it's not a big issue. This stuff you don't really want falling on you because it's, it's some serious wood. So my first um, goal here is I want to clear up some of the stuff that I'm not going to use. I could theoretically cut this all into small wood for firewood, but uh, it gets uh, so that there's a, a diminishing return here on, on carrying some of the smaller stuff back to the house. Uh, so I will, I will cut off things that are you know, maybe an inch and a half and smaller um, and just let those lay and rot in place, and then I will cut the rest of it up as, as firewood. So when I'm cutting firewood, I want to make it as easy as possible for me. So I could just go through and cut off the bottom of the trunk, treat the bottom of the trunk, and then cut up the, the, um, the rest of the, the shrub um, on the ground. The problem is that that's awkward to deal with. Ideally, for me, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this is just hanging up here. There's no, there's no weight on this. It's easy to cut. So I'm going to cut in my firewood lengths. And 
and let it fall. I don't have to worry about cutting down into the ground. I will eventually. Some of this stuff is going to be bigger and I'll need to, to deal with it. But as, as long as I can cut it while it's standing and um, suspended, that's just bonus. So now the nature of these things is that the branches get tangled up. So it, it's not very often that it just falls neatly. Things get tangled up, it gets tangled up in the one next to it, and then I'm cutting and cutting and then suddenly everything lets go. So you have to kind of be aware of what's going on uh, above you. So I've gotten to the point where you know, I want more of this, but I can't reach very far. So I'm going to take a point that it's, it's easy to cut, cut off the rest of that, and then we'll deal with the, the stump. Now I will say that my blade is somewhat dulled. I haven't sharpened the blade since cutting all of this. And uh, it, it's not cutting as well as I would like necessarily, but it's also, it's, it's a lot of trouble for me to, to go and sharpen the blade. So it's cutting fine. You know, just these thicker stuff that uh, it, it doesn't cut as well as I would like. Now I've cut this so that it's about six inches above the ground. I could theoretically treat that right there um, I try to treat stump that's less than six inches. The, the, um, the herbicide works better um, translocating down into the roots uh, the, the closer it is to the ground. Normally I won't leave it this high just because I don't like it aesthetically, so I'll cut it off farther. If you cut down further, recognize that the bottom part of any tree gets a lot of splash up of dirt and sand and other things. So that's probably the, the part that's the hardest on your, your chainsaw blade is when you're cutting down most low to the ground. So you could skip this part of it. Ideally, it would have been nice if I had my last cut had been lower, so I'm not left with this last little bit here. It just happened to be the way it, it worked out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off anyway and then uh, sharpen the blade later on. After we've cut it, we want to treat it relatively quickly. By relatively quickly, for me, it means within the next three to five minutes. You know, don't let it go for a half hour. Don't go through a whole area, cut everything down, and then try to treat it. Um, this will start to, to heal over, not necessarily heal over, but scab over. It will, um, the cells will start to degrade. You want to treat it as soon as possible. So, I will take my sprayer. Now remember, 
that in a tree, you've got the middle part is xylem tissue. Xylem tissue um, cells tend to bring water up and nutrients up from the roots. The phloem, which is out here, um, that becomes the bark and is just under the bark here, is where um, nutrients go from the leaves down into the roots. And that's the area that we're concerned about because that we want this to go down into the roots. So I'm going to treat just that outer layer. I don't need to treat the middle of this because that tissue isn't going to take us take the herbicide any place that I need to go. So um, we're going to try to minimize how much herbicide we have going on and treat the outside. Now because honeysuckle is a multi-stem trunk, you actually have layers in the middle here that were old stems that theoretically you, you might have uh, some phloem tissue there that's still flowing. Maybe not, maybe it's just mostly around the outside, but this is the way I do it, is I will um, treat the each stem as kind of an independent stem, even if they've coalesced into to one larger stump. There's a lot of discussion about when is the best season to be doing this type of treatment and whether the herbicide works when it's cold and how cold it can be. Uh, it's 32 degrees right now. I have absolutely no problem being out here right now at 32 degrees treating this. You know, it, Our experience is that as long as we can apply the herbicide, as long as it's still flowing and not freezing, uh, we're good. And we have had zero re-sprouts using the glyphosate on uh, cut stems like this. So the... Uh, if, if, it, if we apply it when it's above freezing and then it gets down below freezing, again, we've had no problem with that whatsoever. So um, I think that you can do this well into the winter, into the spring. You know, there is a point in the spring where the, uh, the sap is flowing up and sometimes it will wash away the, what you apply to the stem in some species. Uh, at that point, we're, uh, we're picking garlic mustard, so we, we've moved on. But right now in the middle of January, this is a great time for us to be treating honeysuckle. There's not much other things to be working on, and uh, we cut, and it's very effective. Let me just mention, we're using herbicide. Okay, I know a lot of people don't like to use herbicides. This is a good example, though, of how minimal use of herbicide is useful, because we will come back and check areas that we've treated like this, and you see that the uh, vegetation all around the stump is still just as healthy. There's no, there's no leaching out into the soil. It doesn't like it's, it's not like it's killing off and drifting down slope or anything like that. This is killing this particular plant, and I have seen no indication that it is doing anything to anything around around it. So, and I still have good firewood here, and this is up in the air, which again is the ideal situation. Let me show you this, how this saw works. My blade has loosened up may have been heated up or whatever. So to change this, I just loosen up this housing a little bit, and then this is the chainsaw tightening adjustment, and then tighten it back up again. So I don't need any tool to adjust the, the chainsaw blade. So at this point, I can decide where do I want to draw the line. I'm not keen about carrying this stuff back to the house, but it's also a lot of wood to sit out here on the site. So I'm going to actually cut this back. And cut more firewood on this bigger stuff. Again, starting from the end so that it's suspended and I can do it without holding it. So if we take out the firewood, we've reduced the load that's going to be just left here in place. It's a little more manageable. It will it lays down closer to the ground. The thicker stuff tends to stick up in the air. 
and uh, hold it away so it doesn't rot as fast. The smaller stuff lays down on the ground more and it will rot faster. If things are sticking up, even if I'm not going to keep it, sometimes it's good to just go through and cut it so that it compresses down onto the ground where it'll rot better. So, that's what we do. Maybe that's useful to you. Um, if so, uh, we appreciate when people like our videos. Uh, we also appreciate comments. So if you do something different or this is, uh, you have something to add, please leave it in the comments section. Other than that, thanks for coming along.